Can you forgive your worst enemy? I'm going to narrate to you a story about a lady who chose to forgive her worst enemy. I remember seeing him laughing and then looking back at the baby. Then there was this emergency stop just like a big jolt forward. It was so sudden, this jerk. The next thing, I was looking down the barrel of a gun. Within seconds... My life was to change forever. Bena was on her way to Sunday Mass with her husband, Mike, and their three young children. Up to this point, life for this family was going well, with no major problems. In fact, Mike and Bena had found new meaning to their faith three years earlier. My faith at that time, and I would say that Mike's faith was very much, you knew God existed, but, but his way out somewhere, way out in the cloud far away, she says. It was at a woman's church retreat that Bena first heard about a God who was not far away and could actually be known. The nun started to speak about the person of Jesus Christ. And she spoke with such love that I remember right at that moment looking at this nun and thinking, this person knows this man, this person known as Jesus. Bena recalls, it was as if the Holy Spirit came down, as if I asked a question directly to my maker saying, can I know you too, the way this woman is speaking? And at that point, it was as if an anointing of the Holy Spirit had come down and it was like a real meeting of my heart to the Lord. I fell in love with him in this presence of the Lord and meeting Jesus in a personal way. He sort of softened my heart that made me question that maybe those choices or those judgments I had passed on others were wrong. On August Life changed drastically for Bena's family. Mike had worked late the night before in his job as a taxi driver. Bena was going to take the children to church with her and leave Mike to sleep in the quiet house. He gets up out of his bed and he says, No, we will go as a family unit to the Lord. He rolled the window of the car down and he smiled over to my neighbor. He passed a remark to her about it being a lovely day and he was joking with her. He threw his head back and he laughed. Just a great big hearty laugh. I remember seeing him laughing and then looking back at the baby. She recalls. Suddenly, the car stopped with a jolt. Bena knew something was wrong. I remember in an instant looking down the barrel of a gun, she says. Within seconds, I was just in a place that I, didn't, that I didn't know where I was. My mind was in a trauma and in shock. I remember calling out in the spirit to the Lord and saying, Lord, something terrible has happened. Jesus, please come. It was an interfaith attack. Mike was mortally wounded. Michelle, my daughter, was struck in the face and eye with bullet fragments and glass, while my son suffered a gunshot wound to the thigh. Bena and the baby were not harmed. They were all rushed to the hospital. My husband died three hours later, and the child was away to the theater, she says. The other boy, they had not even recognized his injuries yet at this stage. For me, it was outside human. The strangest thing was that while all this was going on, Ben explains, somewhere within the recesses of my being, I could hear these sounds, really draft, really daft, but this is real. I speak this in Jesus' name. I could feel like an inner worship of angels or something, and they were singing at this high pitch, the Magnificent. My soul glorifies the Lord. 
it went something like, My soul glorifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. In God, my Savior, my soul rejoices. This was echoing within me. I could identify that inner thing that was going on with me was the Holy Spirit. Although I was in fear and trembling, there was an inner part of the Holy Spirit who was keeping things under control. Mike's murderer was never found. Bena now faced a life without her beloved husband and a burden she felt was too much to bear. But if the Lord makes a statement, my yoke is easy and my burden is light, I believe that what he's trying to say is, I'm not asking you to carry this on your own, but with me, all things are possible. With me, I can bring you from your crucifixion into your resurrection. Bena has reared her children not to be vengeful or bitter about their father's murder. She speaks to groups on both sides of troubles and tells them about her trials and how God had brought her from a personal crucifixion to a public resurrection. As for the man who took Mike's life, Bena says that she has only one desire for him. I have prayed, Lord, whoever this man is, Give him the chance of salvation too, of forgiveness. Give him that awakeness. Give him the opportunity to either say yes or no to you. She says, I know that it's not by ourselves that we can say forgiveness. Forgiveness is not about a feeling. You don't feel good about forgiving. Forgiveness is about making a decision. I decide to forgive this person who has wounded me. Or in my situation, who robbed me of my husband? Who robbed my children of a father? I know that it's only been in God's grace that the bitterness never settled in my heart. You have to walk the walk. The walk is walking the pain. It was sin that killed my husband. Someone made a choice and decided to murder my husband. What the Lord did for me in that he was stood up in my story. And he said to me, I'll walk with you and carry you in this. What the Lord, I believe, did was he turned the thing right round and he brought a lot of good out of our situation when I trusted in him. The Lord, he never left me. The Lord never left me. Just like this story of Bena, we can also forgive those who hurt us despite the pain. It might be grievous. But we can still forgive and God will forgive us too. Thank you for watching.